Welcome back to What's the Word podcast with Shy Boy Jimmy and Jay. This is your boy Shy Boy Jimmy. Yo, this is Jay, yo. And we'll be discussing real topics, interviewing our new artists, and speaking up about the culture. If you're trying to vibe, like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned for this episode. Much love. Peace. A song will transition into a skit, and when that skit starts, you can hear the previous song like right now. That's your experience. That's your life. That's what you live. So, like, can nobody take that from you? Can nobody tell you you can't tell that story? That's, I was a part of that story. You know, feel it. Yo, welcome back to What's the Word Podcast. We got a few topics for y'all today. And the first thing we'll kick it off with is this interview with our boy, Ethereo. Um, Dario is a Chicago artist, musician, model, actor, all that stuff or whatever. I'm going to let him introduce himself for y'all, though. What's up, bro? What's up? How y'all doing, man? Um, yeah, my name is Ethereo Noon. I'm a music artist, R&B, a model, act, do a little dance, I'm into fashion. You know, I do a little bit of a few things, just creative artists in general. Um, grew up in Chicago. I grew up on West, grew up North side. So, you know, um, Chicago, you know, born and raised. For sure. For sure. Want to kick this yeah. thing up? Yeah, okay. So, you're uh, an R&B act. So, tell us, what made you get into R&B? Like, how did you come about that? Um, I grew up in the household. Um, it's nine of us. So, I'm the youngest boy out of six boys. And um, so I heard a lot of different eras of music in my household mm -hmm. growing up. I was inspired by that. Um, my first inspiration actually was Michael Jackson and The Temptations. So oh, yeah. those were my two um, main like aspirations of like music. I looked up to Michael Jackson and The Temptations, and I always loved it. So grew up performing. Um, both of those day songs, the Temptations and Michael Jackson. So, yeah, I think it's it's always been in me since I was younger, literally. Do uh, any of your other siblings do music, or are you the only one? Um, Is it a yeah, I, my 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 brother Junior does music, but not really no more. He knows how, but I think I'm 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 the main, yeah I'm the main so one in my family, basically. Yeah, <laughs> uh, low key, you know, yeah, for sure, low key, yeah. So. Um, but I just, you know, I feel like for me, it's something that I can't resist, you know, yeah. so it just, I feel like it's a calling for me. Uh, first look though, like you give, you give artists though, like if you just walk down the street, like he do something like, yeah, my, like <laughs> I'll first look. Cause I, I told you when I met you, like, I see you so many places. Cause yeah. like Chicago so small. I'm like, he got to do something because like you got a unique look to yourself. Thank so you, like when you. I saw music, I'm like, okay, that kind of fits you. And I feel like from that, you could go model because you got a unique look. Thank you. So yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. People always, um, like be, um, intrigued by my persona. Um, and they'd be like, I know you do something. Mm -hmm. And it's usually like, you're a creative person. Like, I just know it. Um, yeah. But I, I appreciate that for sure. Because like, even outside of just them um, thinking that I'm a creative artist, they just appreciate um, me as a person. So I honestly, I, um, I like, I tend to be more um, gravitate towards compliments more about um, me as a person than my art, my art actually getting compliments about my art is top tier too. But when people just genuinely like yeah, you for you, you that's way more important to me too as well because character goes a long way. Does it open doors for you? Yeah, I think character open more doors than money. Well, I'm saying uh, like your true. look. Like, do you feel like your look open doors? Because it's intriguing. I'm not gonna lie. Because like you just like like damn. Like what do he do? Yeah, like so I feel like <laughs> it probably opened some doors for you too. I I think I think it has too. And for me, it's like consistency, staying consistent. Um, I've networked with um people. I, I I've done a few things. Like I'm signed with Tim Management. I think my look played a part in that as well. Um, did a TV show on Food Network before in 2020. Um, too, so I think yeah, my um my looks does sometimes get me in places as well, and um uh, opportunity hopefully get me more opportunities, you know. But you know that's the thing in it. Um, I just be myself though, you know. Mm -hmm. So whatever people see, they just get in me. I'm not trying to fit in or be anything else other than me. So yeah, um, yeah. So what was, was that? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So um, early on, what was like your big like 
discovery with like your music because you said you've been into it so what made you like what made you just go to that next level like you know what i actually could do this yeah well i always wanted to do it since i was younger i actually dropped my first song on youtube when i was 16. um but it was the the audio and everything was crappy but it's 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 always been something i wanted to do but um i think starting off when i was younger um being patient with it and and knowing that you know why I shouldn't rush this turned me into the artist that I am today mm -hmm. because I had even more opportunity to listen to more artists that I look up to like Trey Songs, Division, Seven Streeter, Lucky Day, Sebastian mm -hmm. Michael, and Cal Dion. Those are like my main musical inspirations as far as like um, who music I like and that inspire me. To create, yeah, yeah, I feel that because it's like it kind of get like a lucky day kind of vibe, kind of. Yeah. But then it's like I uh, seven streeter listen to your tape. I kind of see here seven streeter and stuff. But then like, uh, well, since I brought up your tape, we might as well talk about your yeah. Tape. But um, afternoon, um, yeah. I, I listened to it. Like I think they always decent tracks. Like there was a few of them that was like I kind of heard like the interpolation of like the samples or whatever, mm -hmm. and so it's pretty cool. And then um, is Chanel Trevillian? Is that Chanel True? Yeah, that's Chanel True. Okay, yeah, that's I was my like, girl. I was like, is that? I didn't know for sure because I clicked the name and it didn't i didn't see it go to like the artist so i don't know i, I don't know I, i'm still working on how to work an iphone yeah, so I don't yeah. Know how to that shit. <laughs> <laughs> but now nah, so like i'm like okay cool but it's like i feel like it was pretty dope but then like honestly to be completely honest uh it it is really loved the seventh track the last yeah. track i feel like that's the best i told him like i feel like that's the best track on an actual record because mm -hmm. like it like shows the uh, versatility of your voice and like mm -hmm. show the power and like the lyrics and everything like that because a few of them um do you write or whatever? It's like, um, I forgot who was the singer. Um, long story short, it's like I heard the lyrics and like the samples and like the the inspiration from other people, but mm -hmm. then like is it really love that really fucking like hit me out of nowhere because like it just shows like you as an artist just showcased it's you without even having to think about nobody, no other artists, no feature, no nothing. It was just simply you. Mm -hmm. And then I got a question about your SoundCloud. So like I went through your SoundCloud, I went through all the songs or whatever. So then it's like I was hit I was telling him, I feel like if you hit me with a dangerous in love and then a dangerous in love too vibe, like how Beyonce did from Dangerous in Love, but then she took the song from Survivor album. I mean wait, what, what album was that? Um Dangerous in Love. Yeah. No, she, it was on Destiny Child. Destiny Child did Dangerous in Love, and then she put Dangerous in Love too on the album. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like um, the one song, Do You Right. Mm -hmm. So it's called something else on SoundCloud. Or is it a, a different song? Um, Well, I did. So not, so it was originally called Nine Months. Yeah. Um, Nine Months. And... I wanted to redo it because Dope. I felt like it could have been done better yeah. as far as um like um mastering go because again it's a pro so when you dropping projects and you are um looking back on it, you like uh, this could because I'm a perfectionist. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, I'm a perfectionist and I <laughs> really take my music serious and I don't wanna put nothing out there that I'm not a hundred percent proud of. So I want I took that back. Cause think about because if you listen to both versions, this one way better. Yeah, this one the um the get ready, I mean get you right was uh, of course it was better, but it's like I ain't trying to say like which one is fucked up or cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like the SoundCloud one, it's just like it was sound like um the drive for like the original or something like or like the um like the demo the demo version mm -hmm. so then it's like yeah so then when you listen to get you right i was do like okay right, yeah. do you right i'm sorry do you right then i was like okay yeah i can see that it's a difference like polished uh more perfected like the mm -hmm. vocals is better and stuff yeah. like that so like, i can see the growth between the two vocals i mean the two songs so mm -hmm. like i wasn't trying to like um drag you under the bus no 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 it's no, just no, the no. fact that like that, when you did, i like I that because like, okay. it's 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 showing exactly what i talk about when i say that for one you can always get better and for two it's okay to for one it's okay to you to do the same song over if you want to mm -hmm. um because you can be like oh i should have put this ad lib on there or, or i should have did it this way i should have hit the note that way so i was like the song was too good for me to be like so yeah that, because it, yeah. that's why i um deleted that project and was like i want to revamp and redo this 
And now I dropped that one afternoon. I'm like, yeah, I like this one. Oh, yeah. I, like this I feel one. like that's pretty cool because you know, it's, like, it's a lot of artists. Like even Tanisha Kelly. On, you know Tanisha Kelly? Um, uh, something, something as simple as you hearing your name. Yeah, I don't know okay. Tanisha Kelly. I ain't know. Um, I, ain't heard I wish you love me. I wish oh, you love, I wish you love me. me. Yeah, so yeah. she basically redoing some of her songs and bringing them back out. And then, you know, like Taylor Swift did that, the yeah. whole album mm-hmm. went down. Like, yeah. I think Asante did that too, like yeah. going around. So like, there's nothing wrong with it. I just was trying to understand the concept of why mm-hmm. you did it. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. That's pretty, I think that's pretty dope. It's always about, I feel like when anytime artists do that, it's for two reasons. For two, so they can own the new version mm-hmm. completely. Um, um, for because and stuff, yeah, the so they can own their masters over, yeah. in for two is because they probably can sing this one better, this even better, or they just want a better, cleaner version. Yeah. Of it. So yeah, because the whispers even did it. Um, the group, the whispers, they uh redid their catalog. So it's like it's like is you do it? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It ain't yeah. nothing wrong with redoing your song. So I I'll be quick. I look, I'll be quick to do a redo a song. Be yeah. like, especially if it's not global yet. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing for me too, because I ain't global yet, and that's the level I'm trying to get to. So it's like, by the time people do catch up to me, they gonna have the finished product. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be perfection. Yeah, it's yeah. like perfection. Yeah. But I got a question about your name. So is Ethereal? Is that your birth name or is that your stage? Ethereal No, no, that's that's my. Okay, I would say I got multiple names because of my um, spiritual background. Mm-hmm. So Ethereal No is. Um, a level I reach, um, spiritually, um, although I'm I still have like my government name, um, Ethereal Noon is what I became after I reached the level of consciousness. Oh yeah. So yeah. So I I looked it up. So I got like yeah. (laughs) I looked up like I got three different meanings. So it's like okay, so Ethereal Ethereal means it stems from a set of powerful words that set our team into motion. Ether Helio and Hero. Ether illustrates the vast reach, connects and broad industry contacts and resources. Helio inspires our customer centric approach, and Hero reflects our pursuit of excellence, achieving the unthinkable to fuel growth to our people and our partners. So that's the first name, or the first one. The other one, Ethereal, a gender that is strongly connected to masculinity, boyhood, and manhood, but not in the same way as a human man or a human boy would be connected to masculinity, boyhood, or manhood. It is something completely separate in its entirety and on its own from the human gender binary. So it's basically um, a man, but it's not a human. Right, it's, so it's more like God, or, yeah, it, yeah. Or, or uh-huh. supernatural or uh, spiritual, as yeah. you said. Yeah. Then another one that's kind of long. So E is for enthusiasm, T is for try or uh, true, the true you. H is for giving people hugs and feelings. E is for extraness, <laughs> those little <laughs> things you do. R relaxation. I is innovator or creation, uh-huh. and O is old fashioned. You cherish the past and love the future. Is that it? That's, that's what you name it. So yeah, I just went through like I was because I was like, okay, this is decent name. Sometimes she like if this is birth name, then cool. His mom, his dad was where I was fucked up for naming yeah. him. Yeah. But then so I was like, this is a stage name. I want to know like the the background, like the the actual reason behind Ethereal because like it's basically I want to say like Hercules, Zeus type thing. But yeah. It's like, but then also Jesus Christ and like or like even like just like Jeremiah, like the prophet Jeremiah. So it can get it can get deep or it can just be superficial. So I, right, I was yeah. trying to see like what was the meaning behind it. Well, the well to me it was uh, my name is based on um, the sun. Okay. Um, meaning like um, ether. Ether is like the life of the universe. Some people say is um, people are like oh that's Greek or whatever like that. It's mm-hmm. really I'm not too focused on the background of what a word come from but it because every culture explained the same thing Definitely. in their yeah. own language um and for me i um say e- ether because ether is the soul of the universe basically well everything is made up of ether so ether is everything that exists um mm-hmm. and it's the sun as well because the sun emanates ether which gives everything life so mm-hmm. for me it's like I am the sun. I'm a melanated being mm-hmm. of earth, you know, and I'm connected to something greater than me. Not even greater than me because everything is everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm connected to the real me, meaning that um, it's a level of understanding that um, although I'm here experiencing a human life, I'm beyond this as well. Yeah. So I'm living two different lives, but I'm making sure that I stay focused on 
each journey because I have a journey outside of the body and a journey inside too. So mm -hmm. it's just recognizing that both is important and how the two connect. Yeah, I, that's pretty dope. I also believe that as well. There's like it's two different paths that we walk in every day. And it's like you we see it like the physical, but it's like it's always the spiritual or like it's another realm to tap into that you need to get into to be one hundred percent free within yourself. Right. So like I do that's pretty dope. So and, Cause I know you said you ch that was your name once you you know fully mm -hmm. got that. Well, did you have a name before that? Yeah, my government name is Emmanuel Williams. Well, I'm saying was that your like performing name? Your stage name, yeah. Yeah, your stage name, or was it always? Nah, it. I ain't even. I ain't even know honestly. Okay. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. When I was younger, I ain't know what the fuck I was going to okay. use. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I had I have no problem using my government name either. Um. But that also took me a level of education as well, because, um, at, you know, whatever you doing, you should be knowledgeable of who you are. So for me, I needed to know more about who I was to accept myself. Um, but that came and that started when I was younger as well, just going through the journey of it. So for me, because I used to I don't want to go too far off subject, but just a little bit. It was for me. I always thought like, damn, um. I have a slave last name, whatever, like that, stuff like that. And I found out Williams actually isn't a slave name. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. So it just takes of uh, studying of who, your family bloodline, just realizing who and what you really are. So for me, it was becoming knowledge of self, really, just knowing who I was and accepting that, but also um, accepting both names because, like, I, I have no problem telling people my government name, and I also tell people my name is this as well. So for me, it's really just... Um, <laughs> just people to understand that it's the same person yeah yeah i like that too because like kind of like the bible too like not to get too spiritual yeah. like walking in a different path and things of that sort um i'm into like self-healing self and all of that as well so i i can i hear you on that yeah. i never thought about like damn let me get myself a new name i'm just like i'm just mac daddy brenda guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean every, nah. it's not it's not a thing that everybody needs yeah. to do for yeah. me but nah. I like that you know what i'm saying yeah. for me it was be it for me it was like it's because again, it's because like I felt like I I I outgrew that government name, meaning like I outgrew um what I thought. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I reached the level where I was like, mm, I'm be I'm more than just that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for me it was like, okay, I'm this too. Because again, I honor both. Mm -hmm. Cause I honor who I come from. I'm proud of that. Um I accept that as well. But I also am proud of what I'm becoming as well. Yeah. Okay. And that's deep. That's dope. Yeah, that's and I like that's, that. I like the fact that you looked up and researched everything. Cause like my last name Morris, so it's like you get deep into like the Morris, like the Morris, um, the Morris people, and like mm -hmm. the, the yeah. Morris Americans, yeah. and all. it's like it, it can get deep with that, that last name. So like, yeah, that's pretty dope. So to actually research who you are and like understand where you come from, cause like Sankofa, where you going, where you come from, stuff like that. That's pretty yeah. dope. How do you feel like? So when did you feel like when you found your the new i'm trying to get my words together That's like okay. did it okay. change like your music like do you feel like once you became this newfound person like you just like it took you to a whole new level do you feel like you always like knew who you were it was just like finding your voice for real well i didn't always know who i was and i think that's just that's the life of everybody in america um um Shit around the world post colonization yeah literally post colonization mm -hmm. so it's like just um that's why i think that's the first thing that I'm glad I didn't make it when I was younger because I would not be who I am today um, at all. Because the point that I am now with the confidence in myself and knowing exactly who I am mm. and even going more into it is like I wouldn't have known that if I was younger because the music bit is not going to tell you who you are. Yeah, These sure. people, they need you to be ignorant. So they can benefit They're from it. shape you. On you know what I'm saying? Way. Yeah. And manipulate you. So it's like, honestly, that's why I accept the way things go. Like I go with the flow, but I also assert myself and be, you know, assertive when I need to be um, and using the networks that I have when I need to. Like I just allow things to flow and but I also dictate the pace as well. So that's why I'm really just a balanced person. I try to use both sides accordingly because nothing, both will always exist. Opposites is life itself. You can't ever do anything without opposite. So if, mm. you know, if I'm always up, I need the balance of sleep. If I'm, you know, always talking, I need the balance of listening. So it's really just about 
um, managing the moderation of both and uh, becoming balanced within. Mm. That's okay, saying solid. Bro. So back on your project, uh, I would say this is like your biggest song, the uh, one. Party on weekend. Yeah, party weekend. Yeah. yeah, party weekend was um. We actually got to pull it up here. You want to play? Yeah, yeah. Let's play it, y'all. Come on, Steve. I had fun making it. I know him. <laughs> She just wanna party on the weekend Bring me on the rocks like she decent She said what she used to do to me I said you can't get used to me She just wanna party on the weekend Hand up a dress like she leaking That's on time. Head out the window when I ride through, ride through, eat it like a drive through. She come on my face and she said, Baby, I surprise you. I said, It's okay as long as daddy satisfy you. She just want to party on the weekend. With me on the rocks, now she decent. She said, What she do to me? I said, Yeah, hey, you used to me. She just want to party on the weekend. I got two cups of liquor that's built in my rap And my windows is tinted, they can't see inside Nights like this, I'm giving you a vibe you miss I really wanna touch and kiss You know that you can't reason She just wanna party on the weekend With me on the rocks that she decent She said what she is doing Trey songs, I heard the Trey songs in it. Yeah, yeah I love, and I, I, I love. I said, I said, Trey song. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> you want to hear who I thought it was? Who I thought it was? <laughs> I told him what you said too. You told him. Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck. Wait, who you say? <laughs> nah. Because no, no. Go ahead, tell him. Tell him. Ben one. 
don't know who Ben was? Uh-uh. Ben was. I'm never leave Yes, I did. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna never leave No, I heard Trey songs. I said Trey songs. Yeah. As soon as I heard this song, that's Trey songs. Yeah. Trey songs for Paris. I for sure. This is dope. But that's Sun Taylor? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all good. I know. I, I said hey, Ben Juan, Will, Pretty Willie, uh, uh, lay your body down. Oh, and, and let down. me touch your body, Lloyd. So I, Lloyd, I, okay. I, I, I thought them three when I listened okay. to your tapes okay. and stuff. Okay, yeah. So, but ben, like the first person I thought about when I heard this, the first what's the first song? Wizard on the tape. Wizard. I think that yeah. was the first song. So it's like when I heard that, I'm like, who? And then I'm like, and then <laughs> Ben once has popped up. I'm like, wait a minute. That's how he remind me of. Yeah. But then like it's those three for sure for me. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Like I get I get different. Like I literally I get Trey Songs, I get Brent Fans, I get Division. Some people say I sound a little bit you hit a little bit like Michael Jackson, like voice wise. Like it the honestly, I feel like that's the beauty of having um, so many different like dope artists that inspire you because mm, you get a little bit of everything from it, yeah, yeah, you yeah. different songs is gonna because um every every artist was inspired by somebody else mm -hmm. and that's how that's that's the circle of life you're gonna be inspired by something that something or somebody that came before you so for me i just take it um and i and i blend it like and when i make my music i don't think about none of these artists but yeah. they in me so i, I might out, yeah. you know it might be okay cool i might get you know what i'm saying kind of like how so many rappers now drill rappers kind of copy chief keith but some may doing their own flavor some might copy x x mm -hmm. it's different some may copy future so it's, it's to me it's like that's the beauty of it because you can create new styles from blending other styles together and you know because at the end of the day i feel like at the um even though people hear um inspirations in there from others they still look at it like but you sound like you yeah, yeah. You know, that's so. the thing that's the thing yeah. about it all it's like as an artist you got to create something that you you may like so you have to create your style like, like your flavor and it's like although it's been done a hundred times like we sing about pussy all day we sing about money all <laughs> yeah. day sing about drinking louis yeah. like we sing we sing about yeah. we sing about the same thing we rap about all the stuff all day but like how can you bring that to the uh, to the world differently mm -hmm. so it's like that's like yeah so it's like as long as you got your own flavor your own sauce and it's like it should be decent so it's like i think this it was decent i liked it it was pretty cool thank you thank you oh yeah, yeah. and one thing you said earlier is it really love was your favorite that's my favorite too by the way no for real. people um and it was my favorite because same as like you said um the lyrics um uh, i feel like the lyrics and the storyline um uh, was perfect and i mm -hmm. felt like it painted a story that everybody relate to and they like everybody had their heart broken before mm -hmm. everybody been with somebody that they probably felt like damn i ain't enough for them or feeling like they not they just not you know reaching a level to this person would be satisfied too so that that meant that song meant a lot to me I, I i wrote that song for the people so mm -hmm. i feel like anytime you write for the people it's gonna always hit the most mm -hmm. so and i like like the other tracks like i wanted to show um different references of like who inspired me too like michael jackson i got you know some lines in there michael jackson said so it's like i the project was done on purpose i purposely put those songs on there that i wanted on there to show um the different um styles that inspired me and then i put that together and you know created that okay okay so what's next on your agenda oh next um really um just you know marketing myself more doing more shows um to me i think i'm the best r&b artist in chicago i don't think there's really nobody else um Is who's else? nah it's a lot of good artists here don't get me wrong shout out to all the chicago artists i just don't th i think that what i'm bringing i think what i bring is what we missing which is that that early 2000 type r&b everybody want to rap sing or like yeah. you know do that urban r&b but for me yeah, i want to sit here yeah. thinking like i don't remember like a r&b artist for real that came out you know what I'm like saying? they main focus on r&b they do want to do like i rap and i sing mm -hmm, like yeah. no it's like the they, they you know what i'm saying they trying to be too modern with it and for me it's like no nah, i want to bring back exactly what and then chicago is heavy on rap right now so it's like somebody got pioneer r&b back in the game and it's mm -hmm. like i'm gonna do that like that's that's my objective. That's solid for sure. I think that's. Well, 
No, not good. I would say that's, that's I think that's really like a good initiative to actually start doing because like it is like a lot of it's a, a lot of RB people. I, I go to open mics, you know, so I'll be performing here and there. But it's like it's like when I hear them, it's pretty dope. Whatever, like cool. Mm -hmm. But then like for the scene that's really out right now, it is mostly rapping and hip hop. Mm -hmm. And it's like I feel like it is like overlooked of R and B singers, like people that's actually doing something. Cause like a lot of us, like a lot of hip hop artists actually singing their hooks now and like trying to do the stuff. It's like that is true, like they doing back and forth. But like, I don't know, so I feel like it'd be hard because like when you're trying to work, when you're trying to work, like a lot of people don't, like you write your own stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I I wrote that entire yeah, I do uh, everything yeah. myself. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's <laughs> I was gonna bring that up because like like there's a lot of like songs, like you try to be a songwriter, like the writing camps so, like try to jam, mm -hmm. jam and stuff. Like people don't like, really like to do that type of stuff no more. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wanna do like everything in house now. So like instead of like letting him write a hook for me or something like that, it's like they don't wanna do that yeah, no more. Yeah. But it's like when you meet certain people that are actually good with collabing and the writing and stuff, I think that like what helps push the narrative of like singers or like push the narrative of like um what's say collaboration or push the narrative for like the music growing i guess mm -hmm. you could say because like when one person doing the whole thing it's cool it's nice but then it's like if it's a team or something it'd be better like to get the i don't know like get the word out more or something like yeah. that i don't know but if you can write your own stuff produce your own stuff sing your own stuff that's beautiful yeah so it's like yeah don't I guess don't worry. Forget what I just said. You're like, encouraging ghost but, right? Yeah, no, nah, nah, but now he said you're encouraging. No, nah, nah, that's, sing, that's okay right with now, singers. Know, singers know, get a I lot just, of help. It's okay. It's but for me, the reason why I don't you I I try to tend from helping others write for me only because I have a particular stat like my my format of making music, I have to do it in my where I live at in my own world. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm a loner. Like I, I love everybody. I'm cool with everybody, but I'm introverted. I'm ambivert basically. Like I get along with everybody. I can go out, boom. But I'm one, real yeah. personal. I'm very particular and picky, and I can't accept any lyrics, just any lyrics either. For one, they gotta make sense. Mm -hmm. They can't just sound like bubblegum stuff. And for me, my process of making music is different. So. Um, and I don't mind if somebody wanted to give me some, it got to be good because I'm be like, nah, I don't, I don't like it. Mm. Um, but I know for me, it's like my music come about because I I have a method in the way I make music. I let it just flow and come to me. I don't force stuff mm. on the paper. That's why my music, none of it sounds forced because I don't force it. And I don't want, I, I don't think everybody use that same process either. So for me, I'm just, I like the way that I write music, but I'm open to I, I, but I take advice from everybody yeah. all the time. That's how I got better. Like my brother, my big, my big brother Junior, is one of my biggest imp inspirations music too as well because he's super dope. But he he really helps me a lot too vocals and stuff like that as well. Mm -hmm. I got better because of him. So I um I appreciate my big brother Junior. He's real good too. Shout as out well. to Junior. <laughs> so yeah, it's just that I yeah. So the whole project I wrote myself. I had fun. Again, my favorite song writing was Is It Really Love because of what it meant. But my actually most strange song is Do You Write. Yeah. It's really I like it. It's the and I was like, wow, I didn't expect that. But yeah. everybody love it. Like I get stories from people. <laughs> It'd be funny, but I appreciate that. And um yeah, I just I just love the process of making music and like taking what's in my head and putting it on uh, on a track and then sharing it. Yeah. Do you get nervous when you put music out? Hell no. I love, man. I got so much unreleased music. And I'm telling y'all, that project is cool. But it ain't, it ain't, it can't I'm, compare. I'm telling about the next. <laughs> you got some I'm shit, telling man. you, the next singles I drop, yeah. I'm watch. I'm telling you. like, And I got different styles too. Like, that's a good style, but I got. I, I see. I don't box too. myself in. Yeah. I feel like I'm more of a Chris Brown type because he does everything. Yeah. I, me too. Like vocally, so it's like, man, I can't wait. Like, I wish I could drop a lot, but I feel like my music is so good. I don't. I, I wanted to get uh, the attention it deserves. Yeah. I want to just be putting it out. It's like, nah, I'm good enough to literally my shit to be on billboards. I mean, on the on the billboard chart. I got. A, I got. Man, I got so many. Um, I got. A, I got quite a few like unreleased songs drives, that yeah. can literally go number one. Yeah, I'm dead. Full of shit, huh? yeah. Bro, I'm talking about I've been working. Drives. 
<laughs> nah, that's, I feel like that's really dope because like as an artist, you do that's what you do as an artist. You work, you put that shit in, and like sometimes you'd be like, oh, this don't sound good or whatever. But now nah, it's like a lot of people like really have good shit on their hard drives and stuff. Like some of my homies, I'm like, you gotta drop that song. Like even me, like I'd be like, eh. but I just be holding on to it, make yeah. it perfected, yeah. like make it better, go back and rewrite, change something up. But yeah, I can't wait to hear that shit for real. You got one more question? Oh, no, I'm good. Appreciate you, man. I got a question. I asked everybody this question. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I asked them Keep to make answers. sure. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna ask the same <laughs> no, question. Okay. So get ready, everybody. Okay. Get ready. Okay. So, um, first of all, wait. Uh, shout out your Instagram, all the stuff where we can find your music. Oh, stuff. okay. So yeah, my name is Ethereal Noon. You can find me on all platforms. It's Ethereal underscore Noon. E T H E R I O underscore N O O N. All platform. All right, for sure. Hey, check out his music and all that stuff. But before we leave, I want to ask you this question. You stranded on a deserted island and mm -hmm. you get three things to take with you or bring with you or have with you. Mm -hmm. What three things you going to bring? Um, hmm. Oh, for one, I'm bringing um, seeds to grow food, trees or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, two, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna bring a filter mm. to filter out the water. Oh, that's pretty dope. On the island, Nobody and then three. That. Yeah, that was that was a good one. The filter. Is yeah, nice. and, and three. I'm bringing a gun. <laughs> okay. So you gonna have bullets with the gun, or it's gonna be? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. I'm bringing. I'm bringing. I'm. Bringing, I'm uh, uh, what's the uh, hey, I love what they call. I'm gun. bringing the F and N, whatever they call it. I'm, hey, look, I'm, I'm bringing the switch. All right, for sure, for sure. That's decent. The filter was a good one. Yeah. Like, did nobody ever really say I think filter the before? The C one is a the C one, one. Yeah, because yeah, everybody's like, I'm just gonna. Kill a bear, are you? I eat tobacco. <laughs> like, eat so your ass. <laughs> yeah, I ain't. I ain't eating nothing. I ain't eating no flesh. I'm a. I'm gonna grow this fruit. Are you a vegetarian? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm not. But I'm just saying, like, nah, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. But if I gotta, if yeah, that's why I'm bringing the switch because I'm get the fuck back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> any animal, and co and plus you got to think about hydration. If you you can't drink no salt water, you gonna yeah, die. So that. if you bring a filter, you fine. Water everywhere. Yeah, that sounds solid. That was decent. Those some good answers. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good. Answer. <laughs> All right, for sure. Hey, thank you for tuning in to What's the Word podcast with Shop Boy Jimmy and Jay. This your boy Shop Boy Jimmy. Jay. And it's Jay. <laughs> he forgot his name. No, I was drinking water, nigga. Right. <laughs> but nah, uh, much love. Hey, if y'all like this episode, make sure y'all follow my boy Ethereal Noon and follow Mac Daily Brenda. Follow Shy Boy Jimmy. Follow my boy Cap J. And leave y'all comments in the, se the comment section. Like, share, subscribe, man. Much love, man. Peace. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Love to everybody. Hey, yo, if you vibe with us, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We're here every week dropping knowledge, interviewing new artists, and speaking up about the culture. Catch us on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts to never miss an episode. And make sure to keep the conversation going. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And hit us up on social media at WTW Jimmy and Jay. Stay blessed, stay 100, and we'll catch you next time on What's the Word Podcast with Jimmy and Jay. Peace.